there are a lot of different report types that we can work with within reporting services. And I wanted to go through giving you a couple of visual examples of some of the more common types. Uh, let me just say, I'm not going to show you every single report type that we can create or every little uh, piece that we can work with here. My goal is really just to give you an overview of the visual effects that a particular element will add to a report and give you some tips and pointers for when you should think about using that particular type. Okay. So you remember back in chapter 16, we talked about the dashboard, your executives, your IT management, they'd been playing buzzword bingo and they wanted to create a dashboard, right? They needed a BI solution and all that fun stuff. And we used this sample report here and I wanted to walk through several of the different parts of this report and just give you names that you can associate with the visual elements that you see. And then later on in the uh, a couple of videos from now, we'll go through and we'll actually create create some of these types of uh, charts here, okay? So we had uh, what's called a sparkline. This is the top left section of our dashboard here. And a sparkline is just a little bitty chart that fits where a word would have fit. So it's built within a table, you have rows of data, and you're just putting in a little bitty chart where there was going to be a word. It's meant to give you a very high level overview of something like a trend. Okay. Spark lines are very, very handy. I love them. You will uh, get used to them. Um, you can see it right up here in the top left. Uh, just gives you a real quick visual of when our peak time was for bikes or components and uh, such like that. So those are called spark lines. Okay. Now line charts are, <coughs> that's what we saw there. That was a, a spark line that was built on a line chart. These are just bigger. Okay, this is, uh, it's not built within a row. This might take up the entire page. Okay, so your line chart is much bigger. And it's also going to offer you, most likely, context. Okay, so you take a look down here at this particular line chart. We see context with this. We see that the black line means actual and the gray line means target. We can see the quarters being plotted here along the horizontal axis. And we see that there is a grouping that here are the quarters for calendar year 2001. Here are the quarters for calendar year 2004. We can see the values. This is our context for us to be able to view this information. In the spark line, you just simply didn't have enough room to put in labels or to put in category listings along any particular axis. Well, in a line chart, it's much bigger and you will have that room there. Okay, so we use this to spot trends and show history. Uh, this is great when you have a time series. See, we're moving along this horizontal axis down here. The category axis is what this is called, or the x-axis here. We're moving, we're plotting a contiguous line all the way across here, okay? So we're connecting, okay? Now, line charts can be big or they can be small. You see it's small enough here that we've embedded it in this particular dashboard. Now, bar charts are another good visual for comparison. Hey, line charts might be better for trend spotting. I want to see which month we had our best uh, sales, for example. Uh, what built up to that? What was the preceding month? Uh, bar charts, though, are probably better for comparison. They're visually easy to spot. When you look at Q4 right here, okay, we can quickly tell that the U.S. happened to be the leader. Okay. So they're really good for direct comparison, okay? Now, data bars, data bars are similar to spark lines in that they are a single row value uh, chart and they are just little bitty columns, uh, little bitty column charts, little bitty bar charts that are built within that particular row. See, we can do a direct visual comparison, right? Imagine that we didn't have this, that there was no visual, and now you're just dealing with a table. And yeah, you can see, hey, we sold 114, and this is, you know, about half of that. But that visual element really does set it off and says, okay, aha, I can see there's a big drop off between Mountain 200 and Road 150. I can just see that right there, okay? There you go, data bars. Now, gauges are just little visual analogies. Uh, these are things we're used to seeing probably on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think they're best for showing progress towards a goal. 
Uh, you get two types. One would be your radial gauge. This is like what you would see on your car or your motorcycle. Uh, and then you have a linear gauge. This would be somewhat like a thermometer, right? So we can set ranges uh, within those and target ranges and you know, we can see how, what our progress is, where we are along a pathway, okay? Now, indicators, uh, going back, I'm reusing this same slide that we saw, uh, same, same screenshot, rather. This is an indicator showing, uh-oh, something is bad, okay? So this little bitty indicator right here is one technique that tells us, uh-huh, we have something to be wary of here. And these are another little indicator that you see right here, okay? They're inline gauges. They're just really simple gauges with a single data point, okay? We can tell whether or not right here with our indicator, hey, we have an uptrend. We have a downtrend right there, okay? So they're just indicators. And if you've used Excel extensively since 2010, you know, your data bars, your indicators, those are big uh, things we can have. Um, green, yellow, red. Uh, we can have um, stop signs, green lights, traffic lights, all of those types of visual analogies. That's what a gauge is, right? A visual analogy. Uh, we can build very, very simple with our indicators. Okay. I think everybody loves maps. Maps came out uh, in the 2008, uh, SQL Server 2008 and R2. Um, they're just phenomenal. They're so cool. Uh, you can do just your basic map and it'll colorize by density. So I could, for example, this is a U.S. map here, and I could say, you know, the darker the color, the more the population. Okay. I'm just picking, that's not what that one is colored. Uh, clearly, uh, Texas doesn't have is hardly anybody. Um, or I can color it in this way. I can change a color. Uh, instead of just doing it a depth by density, I can actually say, you know, yellow is um, uh, countries. I, I don't know. You can pick out your uh, different one. These are countries where we sell widgets X, Y, and Z. And red is countries where we sell widgets A, B, and C. Uh, and then you can have bubble maps, which are great for showing aggregations or populations within a particular map or occurrences within a map, right? The bigger the bubble, the more things have happened in that particular spot. And you can even overlay this. This integrates with Bing maps, uh, which I'm a big, big fan of. I like Google maps, but the Bing, the Bing maps seem, uh, I like the angle that you get with those. They're really, really clear. Um, and so you can actually overlay road mappings or terrain mappings with this and do your plotting that way as well and embed that within the report. Really, really fancy stuff. Okay. Oh, you know, you have pie and donut charts, right? Uh, those are good for showing proportion. You know, when you have 100% and you want to show what the breakdown is between those, a pie or a donut chart is great. Um, you know that a donut chart, really the only difference is that it is a pie chart. It just has a hole in the middle. <laughs> Uh, but we still call them donut charts, okay? Um, shape charts are another way to do this. Um, funnel charts, pyramid charts, those are your uh, choices that you get there. You can change colors, you can gradient, you can shade, you can drop shadow and make them 3D and make them look fancy, right? Uh, area charts are good for also showing trends here. We can visually compare uh, Japan, U.S., and Europe also. Uh, it's almost like a cross between the bar chart and the line chart uh, right here. Okay. And a range chart is very similar, except for we have two values. We have a minimum and a maximum right here, right? So we're plotting a range. Uh, so it's just the number of data points that we're plotting uh, right there, okay? Oh, stock charts. Uh, this is, you know, I've never needed to really play with the stock charts too much, but this is when you have, uh, say, for example, four data points that you want to plot that are all related. So we have a stock uh, and we want to track its price and we want to track it over time. And so we have four data points, the opening price, the minimum price for the day that it sold, the max price for that day, and then the average price for that day. And we want to track those over a series here along our category access, right? Uh, let's see, you know, the big one here, the last one, uh, you'll see this in a lot of reports. Tables will provide context. Um, 
you know, a lot of times you will give a lot of visual elements that you do not have the space to provide lots of labels and lots of information supporting that particular report. You just want to be able to get the visuals there. And then at the bottom of the page or on the next page, you will provide a table saying, okay, well, we said course 170 and we just plotted 170 in the graph. But let's, let's explain what 170 actually is. 170 is the introduction to SQL Server 2012 course, and that is taught by Scott Wiggum. Okay. So that's a good way to just add detail information to a report as well. Okay. All right, well, uh, let's actually talk about in the next video two tools that you can use for report authoring, and then we'll get into installing, and we'll actually start making some of these.